The Dreamer, 1991 by Jack Teachick. I wish Joseph was dead. Me too. Read Genesis, chapters 37 through 48. God had given Joseph dreams in which all his family bowed to him. When Joseph interpreted the dreams, his brothers were furious. We'll never bow down to you. Who do you think you are? Jacob had 12 sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Joseph, go check on your brothers and my sheep. So Joseph took the long journey. His brothers were deadly, vicious men. The dreamer's coming. Let's kill him. Joseph was in big trouble. Reuben stopped the killing. Instead, they stripped Joseph of his multicolored coat and threw him in a pit. This will end his crazy dreams. The pit was dry and sandy. You won't need this anymore. They hated that special coat their father had given to Joseph. When his brothers spotted a caravan, they had an idea. Let's see how much they'll pay us for the dreamer. They got 20 pieces of silver for him. Joseph didn't complain as he was taken to Egypt. In fact, he never complained. Joseph trusted God and believed his dreams would still come true. They dipped his coat in blood to convince their father of Joseph's death. Jacob was horrified at the news. My son Joseph is dead. Won't he ever shut up? He just goes on and on. My son, my son, my son is dead. Old Jacob was driving them all crazy. I'll take that one. Joseph was bought by Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guards. Potiphar noticed that God blessed everything Joseph did. Potiphar also Potiphar found no fault in Joseph and put him in charge of his house. God blessed everything Potiphar owned, so Potiphar respected and trusted Joseph. Joseph was God's man in Egypt, but Potiphar's wife lusted after him. Come to bed with me, Joseph. Whenever Potiphar was away, she tried to seduce Joseph. No, you are Potiphar's wife. That's wicked and I won't sin against God. She acted innocent when servants were near, waiting for a time. When no one was around. Finally, the moment came. Joseph, you are mine. No. She was furious. Now she would get even. She called all the servants back. He tried to rape me. Our master will kill him for this. Gasp. I want revenge. Where's my husband? Potiphar believed his wife's lies. He should die for this, sob, sob. He ruined us. He'll pay for this. Joseph was framed, but God was still with him. God touched the warden's heart, and he put Joseph in charge of the prison. One day, two of Pharaoh's servants were arrested while in prison. Both men had dreams. Joseph interpreted them, saying one would live and one would die. You will be hanged. Gasp. It all came true. Joseph asked the survivor to remember him when he returned to the palace. But he forgot all about Joseph until two years later, when Pharaoh had two strange dreams. No one could interpret them. Pharaoh sent for Joseph when he heard what happened in prison. Come with us. Pharaoh told Joseph his dreams. Joseph explained to the ruler of Egypt what his dreams meant. God says the two dreams are one. They are a warning to Pharaoh from God himself.
Egypt will have seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. But someone in charge of stockpiling food. Put someone in charge of stockpiling food so the people can survive the coming famine. Joseph, I choose you. God had moved. Joseph was instantly raised from a prisoner to the prime minister of Egypt. For seven years, tons of corn filled the granaries, the granaries to overflowing. Then came the terrible famine. Only Egypt had food, and Joseph was in charge. Everyone came to Joseph for food. Their lives were in his hands. Give food to my friend Potiphar and his wife. Joseph's wicked brothers came to buy food and were brought before him. They were scared to death. They finally bowed before him, just like it was in the dream. This was the hand of God. My master says you are spies. No, we only came for food. Joseph remembered their past cruelties and tested them. Under severe questioning, they revealed everything, including what they had done to Joseph. God is paying us back. When Joseph secretly heard them confess and repent, he wept. Later, they went home with the food. When they came back for more, Joseph revealed himself. Joseph hugged and kissed each one and forgave them. Fear not. What you did to me was evil, but God turned it to good. Joseph sent them to bring their families to Egypt so he could protect them. God sent me here to save your lives. So all the children of Israel dealt dwelt safely in Egypt as long as Joseph lived. Seventeen hundred years later, God sent another Savior to Israel. The creator of the universe came as a man, but they crucified him. They did it for evil, but God used it for good. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Jesus Christ shed his blood to wash away our sins. This opened the door for the Gentiles to be saved. At the second coming of Christ, Satan's armies will be destroyed at the Battle of Armageddon. Jesus will rule the world from Jerusalem as King of Kings. You will reign with Christ forever if you make him your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.9 The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Nobody else can save you. Trust Jesus today.